In this video, we're going to continue our conversation about psychometrics, but we're going to start a little bit talking about air balancing and how to perform a basic air balancing. Now, what are we talking about when we're talking about air balancing? Let's go back to some of our designs conversations from earlier. We need to make sure we get the right amount of air into the correct space in a conditioned building or environment in order to maintain humidity and comfort, which is temperature, humidity, noise, all of these things. So we need to make sure the correct airflow goes into each portion of the building. Okay, testing, adjusting, and balancing is a, sort of a separate part of the HVAC trade. Okay, the test involves measuring flow rates, adjusting involves changing the position of the dampers to change flow rates, and balancing is the process of measuring the actual flow rates to the desired flow rates. Balancing is very often performed by an independent third party. In other words, an installer will go out, install the equipment, a technician may go do the startup from the same company, but testing, adjusting, and balancing is normally done by third parties. Before you start to balance, you have to start, there's a procedure to this whole thing. Make certain that all the dampers are fully open to help ensure that the blower is able to deliver the correct amount of air. Okay, always start with all dampers in the open position. Then you have to measure the airflow entering the duct system. Okay, make sure there's enough air to balance. If you don't have enough air coming out of the blower and you're looking for more air than it's available in the rooms or in the registers, you're, you're not gonna get a proper balance. Okay, if the airflow is adequate, you could proceed with the balancing. If the airflow is not adequate, you gotta make some system adjustments to get the correct airflow. Might be increasing the speed of the blower might be um, verifying that there's no leaks, okay? Could even be that the system is not sized correctly for the ductwork. Next, to verify there's enough air, you wanna traverse the duct to get air velocity readings. You add up all the air velocity readings, you divide this total by the number of readings to get the average velocity. Multiply the height and width of the main supply duct in inches. Divide that result by 144 to obtain the area in square feet. Multiply the average velocity and the cross-sectional area to get the air volume. Compare this to the desired air volume. Okay, here's an example of this. Your main supply duct measures 12 by 24. Eh, that's reasonable for a residential main supply duct. So you're going to multiply that 12 by 24, which is in inches, and then you're going to divide it by 144 to come up with two square feet. Again, you cannot do this calculation in inches. You have to get to square feet. Now, we have a whole bunch of air velocity measurements because you don't just take one measurement. You actually have to take measurements all the way through the ductwork. You, we got 600, 300, 1200, 900, 800, 500, 800, 600, 1100, 600, 800, 200. And this is actual. You will see this type of readings when you do this in the field. You add those all up and you divide by the number of readings you've taken. In other words, you want to get an average. Okay, air has currents and it's going to be different in different parts of the ductwork. So if we add this all up and take an average, we have 700 feet per minute. So you take your two square feet of duct, multiply 700 feet per minute. We know we have 1,400 cubic feet of air per minute. Okay, this is the airflow in the main supply duct. This is the number we're going to work with when we go through our examples here. Now, when you, before you start to do any balancing, we got to do the testing portion. You're going to take the airflow readings at all supply registers. You're going to add up all of the individual airflow readings, and you're going to compare this total to the amount of airflow entering the air distribution system. If the numbers are very close to each other, the balancing process can start. 
If the numbers differ greatly, there are air leaks in the system that need to be located and repaired. So, using a flow hood or some other tool to measure airflow, you take all your desire, you have all your measured CFM readings, okay, and you compare them to the desired. Our measured CFM is 1105. Our desired is 1400. Where did we get our desired? Okay, it's we had 1400 CFM in the main supply duct and only 1105 coming from the supply registers. There's leaks someplace. You're losing close to th 300 CFM of air into the attic or the unconditioned space. That's pretty drastic. Okay, now after repair, we end up with 1400 CFM in the main supply duct, which we measured coming out of the blower or air handler. We have 1315 CFM coming from the supply registers. There's still leaks in the air distribution system, but we're within 10%, so there's enough air to balance. Would I like this to be a little bit closer? Yes, if this were one of my install jobs or one of the jobs I did a test balance on, I would absolutely want that to be closer because I'm still losing air. Once you determine there's enough air to balance, the balancing process can start. Now, there's two different balancing methods that can be used. We can use a stepwise or we can use a proportional. Okay, we're going to start off talking about stepwise in this part of video. In the next video, which is part of this series, we're going to talk about proportional. Okay, and the reason I'm breaking it is it is two different procedures. The stepwise method is the most common method of air balancing. You have achieve a desired airflow through a supply register with an acceptable percentage. Acceptable percentages can vary. It's normally up to what are the specs for the building are, but it is usually plus or minus 10%. It's used to balance large open spaces, but two identical supply locations can vary by as much as 20% with respect to each other. Okay, because if one's allowed to be plus 10%, the other's allowed to be minus 10%, you could have a 20% differential between those. It establishes airflow through a supply register as a percentage of the desired airflow rate. All supply registers will deliver the same percentage of desired airflow. Okay, in the proportional method, the supply register with the lowest percentage of airflow is the, not the only location that is not adjusted. Okay, so that's the proportional method. The stepwise method is the most common. Proportional is much more accurate. So let's start off with the stepwise method procedure. You create a chart to record your readings. Normally, the company you work for or whatever organization you're accredited from has charts that are available. You enter the locations and the desired airflow for each location and the acceptable airflow ranges. You take and record a full set of airflow readings. You calculate the percentage of error for each location. In other words, what percentage has it deviated from the desired? And then you throttle down the locations that deliver too much air. You repeat these steps one or two more times to complete the process. So here's a sample chart. We have the room, we have the desired airflow, we have an acceptable range, then we do a pass one, okay, we measure everything and we see how much we have to change. Then we do a pass two, we see how much of a change. And if necessary, we do a pass three as a final thing. You In the stepwise method, the maximum number of adjustments you should have to do is three. So here we have a system. We have a lounge 150 CFM, lounge 250 CFM. These are our desired values. Snack bar 200 CFM, two conference rooms 250 CFM each, offices 200 CFMs each. Okay, those are our desired method. If you add these all up, they come up to 1400. Okay. The design values come from the project plans. Okay, the design CFM that I just showed you, that's from the project plans. That's what's supposed to be there. Now, the acceptable range 
is plus or minus 10%. So for example, in Office 1, it's saying we want 200 CFM. Okay, if it's under by 10%, we can have 180 CFM. If it's over by 10%, we can have 200 CFM. So your acceptable range here with the stepwise method using the default of 10%, okay, plus or minus, could be 180 to 220. So we fill those numbers in. That doesn't require any measurements. Now, let's go measure. We enter the values of the reading for the corresponding areas. You haven't made any adjustments, okay? We want to know what's actually going on. This is your starting point, okay? So pass one, okay? When we look at these readings, okay, we find out how we can then compare it to the readings before, okay? Now, to calculate a percentage change, the percentage change between the desired airflow value and the actual airflow value, it's expressed in a percentage, not CFM. Okay, so the percentage change is the actual airflow reading minus the desired airflow reading over the desired airflow reading times 100. Okay, you're getting a percentage. Okay, so let's say we have a desired airflow reading of 250 CFM. We get an actual airflow reading of 220 CFM. So what we do is we take our actual minus the 250, get that total because that's in parentheses. Okay, so that comes up to negative 30. Then divide that negative 30 by 250, again, brackets, then multiply the whole thing by 100. So we are under by 12% in this example. Okay, so we're outside of our 10%. We have to obviously do something with that. In another case here, we have 250 CFM required. Our actual is 270. We use the same formula, 270 minus 250. We come up with 20, divide it by the desired. We come up with 0 0.08 times 100. So here, our percentage off is plus 8%. Now, that's within my 10%. Okay, however, this becomes a bigger puzzle when we put it all into the sheet. Okay, so what we've done here is after we take our readings, we calculate a percent for each area served. You still haven't made any adjustments to the dampers. We just want to see what's going on here. Now, when you look at this, Office 3 is out of range, okay, and Conference Room 1 and 2 are out of range and lounge one is at a 20%. So we have one, two, three, four that are out of range. Now, what happens when you dial back, when you reduce airflow to this 20% here, it's actually gonna push other numbers higher. So you just have to be aware that anytime you reduce a positive airflow, it's gonna push those negative airflows higher as well as some of the positives also. So, okay. Now, you're going to review the percentage change columns, which I just did. You're going to identify those locations that are above the high limit of the acceptable range. Those are the locations that you're going to adjust first. Okay. Uh, if it's under, your balancing dampers are already open. You're not going to adjust those. So we're going to worry about the locations that are over. You have Office 3. You have Lounge 1 and you have conference room two. Okay, and that's basically, they just circled that on this chart. Now, these are the dampers that you're gonna throttle down. So you're gonna move the dampers in the overfed area slightly towards the closed position. It doesn't actually require a lot of damper movement. Littler measurements work better. Target the airflow for these areas should be on the lower end of the acceptable range. Don't adjust any other dampers, okay? All you're doing is adjusting these. Okay, so now we've reduced the airflow under the acceptable, basically to the lower end of the acceptable range. 
Then you're going to take a second set of readings. We're calling it pass two. Enter the values of the readings for the corresponding area. Don't make any adjustments to additional dampers at this point. Okay. You're going to calculate your percentage of change. Okay. And now you're once again going to look for those areas that are outside the 10%. Notice here, a lot of things have started to line up. So I have one value, Office 2, that is still at 15%. That's outside of my 10%. Okay, I got to throttle that damper down. So you're going to throttle that down. Okay, again, area should be at the lower end of the acceptable range. Leave everything else alone because you really aren't going to need to touch this. Now, you're going to take all of the readings for pass three, not making any adjustments. Okay, and then you're going to calculate the percent of change. You have one here, Office 5 is at 10%, but again, you're allowed a 10% margin of error. If this were my customer, I'd probably go back and adjust the 10% a little bit. Not much, because I don't want to affect anything else that badly, but I'd pull that down a little bit. But anyway, the stepwise process should not require more than three passes. Okay, this is tried and true. If you do this correctly, three passes is all it takes. As long as you have enough airflow to start with. So... Again, stepwise procedure, it is the most frequently used procedure. It's used in areas where there's wide open spaces. It's used in areas where you can have some deviation. Okay, 10% airflow deviation in a wide open space where the air is mixing is not that big of a major issue. Would I use this in a high-end residential environment? No, I wouldn't. Okay, I would use the other method, which we're going to talk about next, with is the proportional. The tools you need this for this: hot wire anometer to take your initial readings, and a flow and a balancing hood, flow hood. Okay, and a calculator. So, okay, that's it for this video. We're gonna in our next video, we're gonna talk about proportional balancing.